It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. In Brazil, ongoing corruption scandals intensified when a new tape recording surfaced on Wednesday that appears to show that President Michel Temer encouraging harsh money to be paid to a close associate of his. The associate is Eduardo Cunha, who recently was convicted of corruption. Cunha was the head of the lower house in Brazil that led the campaign to impeach former President Dilma Rousseff. His latest development prompted outrage among Brazilians, many of whom took to the streets throughout Brazil to demand the president's immediate resignation. Supporters of President Temer are also increasingly calling for him to step down. Temer, though, is resisting the calls and is claiming that his recordings do not prove what his opponents claim. Then, on Friday, Reuters reported that Brazil's Supreme Court released a plea bargain testimony of Joyce Batista, executive of the meatpacking giant JBSSA, that includes accusations that President Michel Temer received $4.6 million in bribes in 2014 before he took office. He took them from the executives of the meatpacking giant. Batista's testimony also claims a former President Lula da Silva received $50 million in bribes in offshore accounts uh, from BGS executives, and also President Dilma Rousseff took $30 million in bribes in offshore accounts. Joining us now from Brazil to analyze the latest developments is Mike Fox. Mike is a freelance journalist based in Brazil. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Thanks for having me, Sharmin. All right, Mike, so tell us about what these tapes are, who released them, the context in terms of the plea bargain testimony that it is, and uh, what is contained in these tapes. Right, so the conversations are between Joel Sli Batista, the head of JBS, uh, you know, Brazil's largest meatpacking company, and President Michel Temer. In them, uh, they're from March, so they're during Michel Temer's current uh, time in office, and in there, they're discussing several different issues. Um, and one of them is uh, having to do with this hush money still being paid to, to Cunha. So they were released. Uh, in it is also mentioned Aisio Neves, uh, and, and obviously him, him receiving funds um, from, uh, from Joel Sli and from JBS. This is just a, a, a much larger, what's fascinating is, is it's a look into a much larger issue of, of how this money and how this corruption is happening within Brazil, right? And how it's taking down, I mean, literally this has been released, ACO Neves has been taken down. You've got Temer who's been tagged up in this, people are calling for his, his ouster and calling for him to be, to be impeached. And, 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 and this is an ongoing thing with these audio leaks that we've seen in Brazil since over the last year and a half already six or seven members of, of Temer's cabinet have stepped down, many of them due to other leaks that have also happened, uh, you know, that show them either taking money or endorsing bribes or calling for the end of Lava Jato. And that's really what a lot of this is being talked about, trying to stop Lava Jato. So the, the, the head, one really interesting fact, which has also happened just over the last day, is the Attorney General, Brazilian Attorney General, who was appointed by um, by Dilma, his name is Jean Nol. he's already come out and said that A, uh, Temer is under investigation and that it looks like Temer and Aceo Neves worked together to, to, to stop justice, really trying to push back on the Lava Jato uh, investigations. So all this stuff is happening at the same time. Uh, and it's, you know, like I said, it's a scene from, from a Brazilian soap opera, only you couldn't make it up. Temer, like you said, has not uh, stepped down. He said he's not going to step down. There have been eight motions for impeachment that have, that have been landed into Congress. Uh, it's not likely that they'll move further because um, the Congress, which is extremely conservative, Congress and Senate, uh, two-thirds of Congress and Senate would have to vote in, uh, in favor of impeachment. And that'd be like uh, if two-thirds of the Republicans uh, or, if, or if Republicans control two-thirds of the House and Congress in the United States and they voted for impe to impeach Trump. It's just not likely. Um, but regardless, 
this is this is big news. Like you said, people have hit the streets. So, Mike, what do you make of the most recent uh, scandal that just broke hours ago related to the bribes that Temer uh, and now Lula and uh, Jilma Rousseff is accused of? Right. So this was just reported on by Reuters and a bunch of other agencies um, <clears throat> that they could also be involved in the scandal. Now, the one thing that's important for us to understand is the first one regarding Temer and also Isil Neves. I'll get into that in a second. Um, there's evidence of that. I heard the tape this morning. Uh, it's pretty damning. The stuff having to do with Lula and Dilma is part of his plea bargain testimony. This guy, Joel Cibachista, the head of JBS, the largest meatpacking exporter in Brazil. But we don't know um, for sure if it's, if it's fake, if, it, if it's true, if it's false. Obviously, it's plea bargain testimony. It should be true, but you never really know anything in Brazil. I think what we can expect is in the next few hours, in the coming days, day or two days, there's going to be a lot on the news. That's what mainstream Brazilian media is going to focus on. That's what Global is going to be talking about. And that's what we're going to be hearing internationally. Because if, if that's true, it's massive. Michael, now, if uh, Temer is actually guilty of what he's being accused of, obviously the tapes are uh, abundant proof to, to a great extent. Nobody can deny it. What happens in Brazilian politics if he has to step down or if he actually gets impeached himself. Right, so the next in line is Rodrigo Maia. He's the head of the lower house. It was actually Eduardo Cunha, uh, who was the very person that the hush money is was being paid to. But it's Rodrigo Maia. Rodrigo Maia is the son of Cesar Maia, who was the former mayor of Rio de Janeiro for, for four or five terms. Uh, he's with the Dems. The Dems is the political party. Uh, it's a smaller political party that's been aligned with the PMDB, also with the PT when the PT was in power, but also right now with the right wing, the PSDB. The Dems, has, they've been involved in the Lava Jato, in the scheme. They've been you know, in, involved in, uh, obviously, uh, investigations against their members and whatnot. Uh, so it's kind of par for the course. He's part of the, the, the Temer government, uh, and there have been investigations into him also receiving money and bribes. Uh, it's hard to say, you know, where it would go from there. Right. And uh, these allegations uh, launched again, Dilma Rousseff and uh, Lula da Silva. Now, obviously, you know, Brazil is facing another election uh, coming up hell or high water, there will be elections. Um, but th this is also a, a way of discrediting the PT and Lula da Silva, who is considered one of the more popular uh, presidents and has a good chance of winning the next election because there's no other leadership emerging at this point. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what this is. There's been a campaign uh, for the last year and a half to try and, or longer than that, as soon as the Lava Jato investigations began, to really try and take down the PT and to take down Lula now. Lula is the hope for the left. You know, I was in Curitiba uh, reporting for The Real News just a week and a half ago, and that was all. Lula had been brought into town to testify for, before Sergio Moro, who's the judge who's been leading the, the Lava Jato investigations, uh, because they don't really have anything on him. But they're trying to find ways to, to tarnish that image. Uh, and in this case, if, if regardless of whether or not it is true, if it comes out this plea bargain testimony was false, uh, then it's just par for the course. Because once that, that meme is out there that Lula and Dilma also took money, then there's a portion of the Brazilian population that's going to believe that regardless of what happens from now. It's the same thing that we're seeing in the United States regarding you know, false news, right? Uh, and so I think that that is just going to continue. And that's why I think the media is really going to harp on this thing regardless of whether it's true or not over the next little bit. One thing that is very, very important also from the audio tapes, which we haven't discussed just yet, is... Um, Aceo Neves. Aceo Neves uh, is a senator. He was a former presidential candidate with the PSDB. He's also the president of the PSDB. The PSDB is Brazil's largest um, right-wing conservative party. They're the staunch enemies of the Workers' Party. Uh, and he was just caught up in this same uh, tape that was released on Wednesday and Thursday. It Take it even further. He actually did receive $2 million because the federal police, I mean, $2 million reais, the federal police actually followed the money and saw that his advisors received the money. So he uh, was suspended just yesterday from Senate. We know that, that so he, that, that, that's a huge hit for the PSDB, the, the right wing, um, the, right, the major right wing party. And they've, the PSDB has been really, really tight with 
with the PMDB, that's Temer's party, obviously in, in this government. So, so that I think is, is a really big thing for, for your viewers to understand is what that means for, uh, for the right. He was kind of one of the leading candidates for the PSDB and for the right wing going into the 2018 elections. Uh, and so regardless of what happens with Lula and Dilma, the right wing also has to kind of reorganize around a, a, a new candidate going forward because AECO is not going to be standing for election. Such politically devastating times for people of Brazil. Uh, what can they expect moving forward? There's a question about whether this is the end of the, of the Temer government. I would say it's probably not. But is it the end of the Temer government's ability to push through its austerity measures and its reforms in Congress? And I think that's really what we're looking at in, in the next couple of weeks, the next couple of months. The Economist just wrote an article yesterday in which they were asking the same questions. Will Temer be able to continue to push through the, the massive austerity reforms? What will be the fate of the pension reform, the labor reform, which are kind of sitting there in Congress and waiting to be voted on the next little bit? Temer's been really pushing for the pension reform. He has not had the support, and it's extremely unpopular. Will he be able to push it through? There are big questions here, particularly now that he himself is being tainted, caught up in this whole big you know, corruption investigation. Uh, I think that is the big question also for kind of the social movements and folks on the left that are, you know, want to push back as, as, as heavy as possible, as much as possible on the austerity reforms. I think we're going to continue to see people in the streets. You know, in, in Sao Paulo just yesterday, there were massive marches um, out against Temer, and they've been saying, they've been actually calling for another general strike, whether or not we'll, we'll see that. We know that major marches are expected in the next little bit around the, 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 the labor reform, and I think that with this, it's only going to grow and, 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 you know, and become even deeper. And I think one last point, which is important to understand for, for your viewers, is just the understanding about what all this stuff means. You know, this is literally the implosion of the, the, the Brazilian politics and Brazilian politicians from within. As soon as one person goes down, then they're using audio leaks to take down the next person. Cunha, when he was forced out of office, forced out of the, the head of the lower house last year, he said he was going to take down other people because he had damning information. He hasn't leaked it yet because he's been paying slush money, you know, hush money. Is that going to happen now? You know, we don't know what the next couple days, weeks and months will mean, but it's definitely going to be a roller coaster ride. Uh, and I think people are just hoping that the austerity can stop and that the, you know, the left and social movements can really you know, take this opportunity to really push back. All right. So just a few weeks ago, we did an interview uh, with Michael Fox about the general strike that took place, which was massive demonstrations uh, across uh, Brazil in terms of resisting the Temer government's uh, austerity policy. So do tune into that. And I thank you so much for joining us today, Michael. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network. Mm -hmm.